adventurers welcome back for another exciting adventure today we are in oklahoma in a place called jet it's really cool they have this really amazing air force jet right as you come into town it's epic but that's not why we're here i was scrolling around on my social media and found this next location so with that being said before i tell you any more roll the intro and let's get on this road about to do something extra cool at the Great Salt Plain State Park here in Oklahoma. Now, it took us a while to get here. It's pretty remote, but it is well worth the drive because we are going to be looking for selenite crystals. We're gonna dig into the earth. We're gonna pull out crystals and anything that we can find, we can take home with us. So today is gonna be a super fun day in this hot Oklahoma heat. But we are taken care of today because of Banner and Oak, who provided us with some amazing caps to keep us shaded and cool. But let's get right to this state park. Let me show you around, tell you what's up, and then let's get our hands into the action. Before we get our hands in the dirt and start looking for these crystals, let me tell you a little bit about this park and the accommodations. There are several different accommodation options, including these awesome cabins. I'm kind of impressed with these, not even gonna lie. These are all inclusive cabins. They have the bathrooms inside, which some state parks don't, and I really don't understand that. If I wanted a primitive camp, I would camp in a tent. But these are really nice. They have kitchenettes, a nice already made bed, so you don't have to bring all of your own supplies. They even have little porch lights, individual spigots, and uh, they're all in all pretty nice. They even have a satellite dish. What? This by far is a glamping option. Yeah, there's nothing primitive about these cabins. Tons of parking, satellite, air conditioning. Whew, they are speaking to my soul right now in this Oklahoma summer, for sure. Where are all my fishing friends? Do you like to get out on the lake and enjoy activities? Well, guess what? There's a boat launch right here. And it's really nice because there are so many parking places. There is no reason that you can't bring your boat out here. Like for real. And the rules are pretty simple. Really simple actually. It says here on the sign, we're just supposed to check the lake conditions before we get out into the water. Okay. I do recommend doing that when you're closer to town though. Signal out here, not so great. At least on AT&T, which is my problem. Hmm. I'm a little discouraged right now. We're at a campsite and it looks nice, but there is absolutely no shade, none. And it's kind of small. So I'm really confused as to knowing if this is the only campground. Now I do know that primitive sites are only like $15, $14, $15. And your RV sites, which have improvements, which I see here are between 20 and 35. They do have discounts, of course, but I'm not seeing any of the primitive tent sites unless they are this big open area in front of me. Hmm, that's something to figure out. Something kind of cool about this particular park is they do have a community center, which you can actually reserve. And uh, that's kind of neat. Around back, they have a grill and a smoker. There's a huge open room. There's a kitchen inside, there's couches. You could basically have everything from a family reunion to a birthday party and everything in between. All you have to do is make sure that it's not already booked. So on a day like today, which is a random day of the week, there is no one here. You could totally secure yourself an excellent place to get everybody together and enjoy a day, probably at a 
somewhat reasonable price. Again, I'm gonna leave a link below to all the information about this park though, so go and check that part out. Let's move on. last we have figured this out so if you go into the initial entrance of the park where the office is like most people would there's only one campground and it's very small so there's not all the cool stuff but if you go just a quarter of a mile down the road here it all is everything that you could possibly want other than the cabins and that one campground so right here, we are over at one of the campgrounds on this side where you have beautiful river views, amazing wide spaces, cool pull throughs, great places for tents or for RVs. Pretty much this is where it's it at this campground. I also have found a bathroom, so we are going to go check it out in grand fashion just because, well, that's important. It's a real bathroom, guys. On the other side of the camp, there were only porta potties and ball toilets. Here we are in the lap of luxury where we even have a changing table if you need it. We have flushing toilets and running water, and there are totally showers. Yep, showers. Ah! So that is such an improvement. Definitely come the quarter mile extra or book online because oh, yes, especially if you get out in the lake, you're gonna want the shower. Just saying. I definitely feel like I need a shower and I haven't even been in the lake or in the mud yet. There is an honor box. So if you decide to camp here and you don't see anybody else, do the honorable thing. Pay the fee. Just do it. Pay the fee. primitive campsites, you have some great views, some super great views. This is the Sandy Beach area and these two spaces, space 25 and 24, seem to be twinsies. They share. They have this great shore right over here that you can go to and they share a grill and a fire ring. So I mean, all in all, not too bad. From the primitive to the improved, you have tons of options whenever you come out here. And uh, whether you like the lake or getting your hands dirty, it's just kind of up to you. There's tons of activities that could keep you busy for a few days out here, whether you're by yourself or with your family. And with that being said, here we go. Else pretty cool is if you turn off at the office here you can actually come down this long road that brings you to this giant parking area that has picnic tables all around it and while that itself is not cool enough there's a really amazing spillway over here with a trail that goes all the way down the side so we're gonna check this out and uh, I think that this is gonna be something super exciting for those who aren't wanting to get out here and uh, burn up in this heat is extra cool guys you have to come here and check this out not only is it really kind of neat to look at whenever you're up close the fish are trying to like hop up and uh unsuccessfully of course <laughs> there are also about a million turtles in this little pond right here and it's crazy to see them from above they're just lurking all sorts of different kinds there's soft shell there's hard shell pretty much anything you can imagine but um it's pretty much epic this side, of course, being the more churning water, and then on this side, I could totally fish, if I fished. So as you can see, there are 
are beautiful vistas all around this lake that you can check out. And that's only if you don't want to get your hands dirty, but I'm all for it. I'm about to change. Meet me out at the Salt Plain. As you first enter the dig site, there is this great kiosk. We love a kiosk. We love kiosks. This one right here tells you a little bit about how to dig, but it also tells you about the past, the plains, and the habitat. So you need to stop off here and make sure that you also check out one of these little wildlife refuge pamphlets. It has a lot of information about the site here that is absolutely fascinating and super helpful if you're in the area. I love this. So let's get on. Let's go dig. Now the basics are pretty simple. Number one, dig a hole. You want it to be approximately two feet by two feet. No big deal, right? That means you're gonna need a shovel. Bring a shovel. Otherwise, your hands are gonna be really tired. Number two, the hole will then fill up with water, but bring your own water just in case because step three is gonna require some water. What's step three? Let's get right to it. Step three, slosh the water up on the sides. When you're sloshing the water up on the sides, kinda like this, you're gonna see the crystals merge. When the crystals merge, you can then uncover them safely without breaking them. That's step three. Step four, my favorite step. You're gonna wash them off and then take them home. Yeah, you can actually take things home from this park. That never happens, like ever. So come out, appreciate it, take things home, and have some Okay, we have made it out and we are about to get our hands a little bit dirty and find ourselves some crystal. I am all sunscreened up and uh, I'm ready to go. It's a little bit windy, it's a lot sunny, and I am ready for an adventure. Woo! Okay, so the goal is you dig a hole like we've done here. It then fills up with water. After it fills up with water, you start mining. break we're about to wash off all of our finds and figure out what it is that we ended up finding out here at the Great Salt Plains Park. I am filthy so filthy but I had so much fun and it has been a blast our hole just kept getting bigger we kept finding more and more crystals and uh, yeah super awesome let's go check out what exactly that we found and uh, cool off a little bit the Sun is beaming So we found several that were like this, which are absolutely awesome. These are clusters, and then we found hourglass also. So, ah! Everything basically looks like blizzard white outside. It is the coolest thing to see and I'm going to show you some final views as we take off from this journey. Thank you for coming out with me to the Great Salt Plains today, seeing all the campgrounds and accommodations, all the cool stuff out at the spillway, and then also coming out and getting a little bit dirty. Time to take this sunscreen off 
and uh, get cleaned up. <sighs> One last look.